Well, in part three, you got to see me make a little bit of a screw up in the amplifier repair there. So part four is going to continue the repair of the amplifier and we'll get it up and working in this video. Well, as you can see, I have an amplifier again. One important step into getting this entire Fisher Studio Standard equipment running again. I've only got one LED working right now, and as you can see, it's pretty freaking bright. The other one has decided it doesn't want to work anymore, and I don't know why yet, but I'm going to go ahead and rewire this anyway. This was just kind of a temporary test. Transistors on the amplifier have been replaced, diodes replaced, and the fusible resistors have been replaced as well. And to give you kind of an idea of the way it sounds, I have to say I am extremely impressed with the way this thing sounds. These slider controls work absolutely perfect. I There's no scratchiness or anything in them. I'm going to go ahead and hit them with a little deox anyway while I've got this thing apart, but uh, they don't need it. I was quite surprised that after nearly 30 years that those controls work absolutely perfectly fine. i got to say, I, I don't think that this thing is a piece of black plastic crap. I... Now that I've actually heard it and played it and, and it's actually running what I think should the way it should be running with those transistors in there, um, I think that this thing is definitely pretty well kick-ass, I've got to say. Now, I don't know about the rest of the Fisher equipment that came with this. Uh, I still got to go ahead and go through all that stuff, but the amplifier was the main thing I wanted to get because even if everything else in that pile is worthless... This is definitely worth fixing because there's always a place for you to use an amplifier somewhere in your house. And i got to say, this thing really sounds incredible. I can't begin to um, duplicate how this thing sounds over YouTube because, unfortunately, my camera doesn't really seem to do low-end sound very good. I'm going to go ahead and try my digital camera, actually. And if that works better for sound, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use that to record a video of actually dem demoing this with the tuner and the CD player and all the rest of the components put together. Um, there's not a whole lot difference between this and the Technics and a lot of people consider Technics to be an awesome brand so and considering that Panasonic now owns Sanyo and Fisher consequently um, yeah I mean this is basically a Technics if you want to get right down to it even though Panasonic didn't technically build it but <laughs> since they own the company well we can call it a Technics why not anyway I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing back together I'm also gonna go ahead and get that LED put in there correctly rewired I've also got uh, right now I'm using uh, some fast blow fuses in here so I'm gonna go ahead and replace those with the correct slow blow that came out of it uh, I've also got some heat shrink tubing I'm going to put around these leads of the LEDs. Put it all back together and we'll give it a good old smoke test. And on the subject of at least build quality, and on the subject of build quality, or maybe in this case at least a little bit of thoughtfulness that went into the design of this, consider this the heat sink, for example, protrudes out the back of the unit. It's also a nice shaved fin heat sink. Very nice. This eliminates a lot of the heat buildup that would normally occur inside of this amplifier that if it had the heat sink in here, which a lot of them do, and most receivers are. In fact, I think it pretty much every receiver does. It also allows there to not have to be any kind of venting across the top case, and you can put your CD player and your tuner right on top of here. Kind of nice. Should, uh, Increase the longevity of the capacitors, I would think, because there's not as much heat buildup inside of here. The other thing that's nice, too, is the fact that these chrome-plated controls, meet the volume control and the uh, input selector over here, while they are plastic, the chrome is obviously conductive. Well, they thought about that, and they put a, a grounding wire off of these 
uh, controls here. There's one here for the volume control, and there's uh, one, or actually two of them, coming off of the controls over here for your selector. Now I can't tell you how many times, and maybe you've experienced this yourself, that you go on ahead and you're walking across and you go at your floor and you, you go ahead and push a selector button or something like that and you get zapped because of the static electricity that you've built up. Well this will maybe not completely ensure that the static electricity won't go into a component and fry it. This is definitely going to help minimize that possibility more so than a lot of other receivers that I've seen, I've never seen plastic buttons with the grounding strap on them. Just because they're chrome plated, even chrome plated ones, I've never seen that. So, I think you could safely say that there was at least some thoughtfulness in the way this thing was designed. It's just too bad they used apparently cheaper components to build it in some places. Okay, so I got the amplifier put back together here, except for the top. Got the faceplate all cleaned up there. The display is lit up as you can see with those nice LEDs look quite beautiful on there all the buttons cleaned up very nicely this thing looks brand new now except for there is a little bit of a boo-boo down here looks like the edge of this plastic has been chipped off right there unfortunately and there's also a little bit of something up here that it feels like it's on the surface it doesn't feel like a gouge to me but uh, I haven't been able to get that off yet, so I'll probably have to use a little bit of Goo Gone or something like that. The finishing touch on this amplifier I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give the top a good shine. Now if you want the paint to really pop out, kind of like the way it did when it was brand new, or maybe a little bit better than it was brand new, just go ahead and hit this with some uh, dashboard protectant, or what I'm going to use is some pledge here and a paper towel. Go ahead and shake it up and just kind of spray it across there. And just go ahead and get our paper towel. And we'll just wipe that into that paint. Shine it up real good. I do like dashboard protectant better, however, I don't have any at home right now, though I have some at work. This also works quite nicely if you want to freshen up the surfaces of your laptop. Dashboard protectant gives it a very nice shine. Just like that. I'm going to hit the sides here a little bit. Now, of course, this isn't going to cover up every scratch or anything like that, but it just gives it a nice sheen. This makes it look nice and new. And it will evaporate, but it'll leave that nice shine. I also use Pledge to protect my dashboards. That was a tip I got from a fellow I used to work with. Still haven't been able to completely get this out, but uh, it's better than it was, that's for sure. You can also use some spray on auto wax and kind of go over this thing, or some auto polish. You might want to do that on the face plate there, um, just to kind of shine it up a bit, but Pledge works just fine for this. Okay, so <clears throat> now's the demonstration. I have the tuner hooked up as you can see and the CD player. Although it's a rather basic CD player, not really anything terribly special. It doesn't even have a uh, minute counter on it, but uh, that's okay. Okay, so. Boy, that uh, display is almost too bright for my camera to be able to focus in on that. I don't know why. Doesn't look that bright in person, but anyway, here you go. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw a little bit of M&M on. Give these speakers a good old test and this amplifier a good old test. Get 
Attention for my music, wanted to be left alone, a public excuse me. For wanting my cake and eat it too, and wanting it both ways. Fame made me a balloon, cause my ego inflated when I flew see, but it was confusing, cause all I wanted to do is be the Bruce Lee, a Bruce Lee, a Bruce Lee. And let's go ahead and give it one other test here. A little bit different kind of music. You can see that tray's a little dirty. I do need to clean this out. And I have had this thing skip a little bit when the bass hits, which this Technic or this Teak. CD player that I got doesn't do that even when it's on these Fisher speakers that are part of this unit. Let's just go ahead. This is a little Joe Daniels. And one other thing. It's kind of cool you can see that laser right in there. Or unless that's just an LED, I'm not entirely certain. Let's go ahead and throw a little music on that would be appropriate for this era. And also a little bit of music from my youth. How's about that? Tell you what, this Fisher definitely likes that music, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of good bass and a lot of good treble. As a matter of fact, there's so much treble, I actually have to turn it down a little bit. But, uh, yeah. This has turned out to be a very nice unit. Look at how nice and shiny that faceplate is. <clears throat> Top might have a few scratches on it. There might be a little bit of a boo-boo there. I'll tell you what, that sucker does look incredibly good now. And I love the way those LEDs look on that display now. Very nice. Well, this will conclude this video for the Fisher CA871 amplifier restoration. I'm going to do a complete um, demonstration of this entire set once I get everything running. Oh, I guess before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and do the tuner here real quick. I will remember that much longer, and it's much more painful than Notre Dame getting obliterated by Alabama. Although that was painful That also, actually sounds really I good. I take the obliteration as a sports fan compared to the narrow loss. Now, Justin, and this tuner is fan, running off of its original uh, loop antenna back this? there. Are you swaying one way or the other which you would rather have? This is my fan? makeshift antenna here. For the FM. Say, say that again? Are you swaying one way or the other in terms of... Let's go ahead and see how the FM works here. I need to change this antenna around a little bit. I wasn't sure which one to plug it into here. Hmm. Let's 
surprised that's as good as it can do. Huh. Well, let's find another station here. I'm surprised because this Sherwood, that's all of an antenna that I have, and it picks up that station just fine. Huh. I wonder if I got a problem with the uh, FM plug there, because that seems awfully weak to me. Oh, I can't believe I can't pick that up. Hmm. Well, that's something else I'm going to have to play with, obviously. i figure out what's going on with that, but, uh, cool. Quite nice. So far, we're going pretty good on this restoration of this entire Fisher out set up here. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.